important book uh, so far, which is a, a, a large compilation of his notation work. It is a, a, a magnum opus uh, and a very uh, elaborate book. Uh, so for, uh, on uh, Natana Kairali's uh, behalf, what we thought was uh, by the time the book is finished, which will be in a, a few months or so, uh, we wanted to slowly introduce uh, Guruji Venu's work with hand gestures, um, his system of notation, which he uh, invented and uh, devised and has been a, a huge uh, work. So, uh, and um, the, the specialities of the book and the, the language of gesture of the Kerala tradition. So this is, a, all of this is a very vast topic. So we thought we should have a, a series of a few uh, gatherings like this, where we could introduce uh, the book um, to, to everyone. So we are starting today on this journey. Uh, and uh, today we have with us uh, one of our closest friends, and uh, a person who in the last few few years mainly has been a, a, a big support and inspiration for my father. And uh, he has uh, really been so encouraging and uh, uh, so supportive uh, that we owe, um, you know, the, the energy that my father has to, to really sit and complete this work really comes from this person that is none other than Sri Vinod Gopalakrishnan. Um, so we are so happy that we can start uh, this today with, with him. And um, I'm just going to give us a brief uh, introduction to Sri Vinod for those who may not uh, know him very well. He is actually um, a person who silently does very important work in, in the uh, field of, of uh, Indian, traditional Indian um, culture and the arts. He is uh, currently pursuing a, a, a PhD in museum studies and art curation um, that is currently, but uh, his, all his life, he has been a very passionate collector, a passionate researcher, and he has a huge collection of of publications, of films that he will, he's working towards making useful for everybody who's interested. So uh, I'm just going to uh, say a few more things about Vinod Ayrton. He is the son of a very respected dance couple, Sri uh, late Guru Gopalakrishnan and uh, Srimati. Kalamandalam Kusumam Gopalakrishnan. They are both uh, very important. They're a, a dancing couple who have, who have sorry. Uh, uh, and uh, so he is the son of uh, Guru Gopalakrishnan and Guru Kusumam Gopalakrishnan. And he is, uh, his wife is also a very uh, beautiful, very well-known, very important dancer and scholar, Dr. Sri Lata Vinod. And he is, uh, uh, by profession, he has, um, he's, uh, was educated in the Sloan School of Management at, at Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology. And he is a banker by profession, but his personal passion is in art history. And over three decades and more, he has accumulated a vast repository of material on world history, literature, dance, art, music, film, and theater. And he's currently working towards his PhD in museum studies and art curation. And uh, this is about Vinod Ayrton. Uh, he has, like I said, been very important uh, support for uh, my father's work. And I am so honored that you are here. Thank you so much for being with us here today. And so Vinod Ayrton is today going to present or talk about notate, dance notation in general and uh, how to contextualize, how to place Venuji's uh, own work 
on that dance notation in this uh, context. So thank you so much. Over to you, Vinodeta. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Kapina. Uh, you know, thank, thank you for all the uh, support and encouragement. I think it's uh, something that uh, I feel uh, very encouraged by, and I'm most happy when I'm actually uh, talking about uh, art or, or, or uh, supporting uh, art in any form, anywhere, wherever I can, and, and wherever I can add value. Uh, I have been uh, exposed to uh, Venuji's art uh, for a for a number of decades, uh, like Kapila said, because of my parents' uh, association with them. Uh, but over the years, I have uh, begun to admire uh, the man uh, in him and the mind in him. That's that's uh, that's very uh, very important uh, in terms of uh, making that. Uh, connection uh, with the art world as well and the imaginative prowess that one has. And then of course, uh, while that is important, there's also the concept of perseverance. Uh, Benuji's life has not been easy. I'm aware of that. Uh, but the amount of dedication, clarity and the persistence with which he put the work together is a story that uh, explains the uh, progression and the strengthening of his art uh, over the num uh, number of years and uh, his uh, sheer context of publication of documentation uh, is quite unique uh, and the 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 impression that uh, one takes away from that body of work uh, is something that uh, is not seen uh, in, in too many quarters, especially when it comes to uh, the world of uh, art consistently over so many years. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I still do not think that uh, I, uh, you know, I hold any kind of uh, authority or uh, position to be able to address uh, a forum like this uh, uh, I can't see uh, all of the uh, attendees, but Ludwig uh, Pesh and Maike is also here. Ludwig is somebody whom I have great reverence for. We have been friends since 1982 when he was still studying at uh, Kalakshetra. And we've been in touch. Uh, we don't meet as often as we used to, but we've been in touch all through the years. And uh, we've also met a couple of times at uh, uh, Nadnagairli in uh, and uh, it's 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 an it's a big honor uh, that Ludwig is also participating. He has played a huge role in terms of uh, elevating the awareness of uh, South Indian classical music uh, and, and his uh, publication uh, through the Oxford University Press. It's 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 one of its kind. So thank you, Ludwig, for your presence here and Mike as well. Uh, Nirmala Chachi is also here. I'm honored with that as well. And as I talk about the story, uh, we will speak a little more. Kapila, thank you for your uh, um, introduction. Um, and and uh, while you might be appreciative of this, I'm also hugely appreciative of your art. So having said that, uh, let me start uh, my deck altogether. Is my screen visible? No, not it. Okay. Uh, screen sharing button, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is coming. Now it's coming up. Okay, let me put it into full view. <coughs> One second. So today, uh, is it clear now, full screen? Yeah. No, not yet full screen. Yeah. Yeah, now it's great. Okay. So 
what I'm talking about today is uh, a, a small little journey. Uh, it's a journey that I've put together uh, in terms of um, my little talk in trying to explain uh, what the world history of dance documentation has been. Uh, so if I start from that context, I would then like to go into the work that uh, uh, Guru Venuji has done and through, uh, through that entire learning process, influencing process, inspirational process, uh, where he started and from uh, to where he's got to now. So I begin with, with just posing the question of what is dance notation? If we want to talk about, uh, 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 you know, a definition of what uh, notation is, uh, it is to music what, the, you know, written word is to drama. Uh, but in dance, notation is a translation of four-dimensional movement. The fourth dimension here is talking about time. And the challenge is to have it written down on two-dimensional paper. So that's the whole concept of what notation is uh, all about. But in terms of uh, human dance movement and form, you have to uh, generate a certain set of symbols, figures, or map paths of movement, and in some cases, add numerical systems, letters, and, and the word notations that denote what that movement is going to be as the dancer, he or she, is uh, on a particular stage. So over the history of dance in the world, uh, there have been many uh, dance notation in the world. There have been many, many uh, attempts at documenting things. Some of them have been pathbreaking, some have been uh, uh, important, but not as uh, detailed as others. But the potential is there and human movement is always being something that uh, the human uh, quality or the people are interested in. So that's the context of looking at uh, what a, a notation definition is. If you go there and look at, start looking at the history of where notations began, this is uh, 1680s where Pierre Beauchamp in uh, Paris, uh, that's when uh, Baroque uh, style of dance was very popular in Europe. And uh, he developed this uh, publication uh, in the middle, which says the choreography or the art of describing dance. So they, he and, and his ballet master, Auger Fulet, actually put this book together. Uh, and on the right-hand side, it says Recule de Dance, which is collection of dance compositions by Fule, the director of dance. So this is a book that they put together and it was published in 1700. And it was used to record dances throughout the 18th century. There was nothing else in terms of uh, uh, documented uh, uh, situation, uh, the documented publication that people could refer to. However, if you look at what went into this book, it was more this. This is a page from yeah. that book, which, which denoted more of movement uh, rather than symbols. There were, there were less of symbols, so you've got music on top. This photograph is actually the other way around. I cannot, uh, this is the only copy of the uh, image that I got. Uh, so you've got the musical staff notation on top, and then, of course, the movement of what that Baroque uh, dance movements ought or would be when the group uh, danced on the stage. So this is just a, a publication that was, uh, that was put out in 1700. If you go a little later to that, in 1892, we come closer to the modern world that we know of. Uh, this is when the actual concept of uh, notation writing actually began. Uh, Vladimir Ivanovich Stepanov, he's the man on the left, uh, and uh, in the middle is the Marinsky Theater in St. Petersburg, and on the right is Marius Petipa, uh, which, who was the, uh, the ballet master at the Marinsky Theater, which is still standing and still operating just as it was more than 100 years ago. Uh, now, I'll talk about 
uh, Marius Petipa first. He was an incredible uh, ballet master who, in his lifetime and association with the Merinsky Theatre, he composed, if I am right, more than 50 ballets, 50 full-length ballets. Now, people have heard about uh, Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, Nutcracker, Don Quixote. All of them, without exception, were, were composed by Marius Pitti. So when you have such beautiful compositions happening over a hundred years ago, uh, there were many corps de ballet dancers and Vladimir Stepanov was all was just one of them. He was just one of those uh, dancers. And he kind of uh, thought that the dancers, the dances had to be recorded in some way for posterity. And he is the one who actually developed a sense of notation of capturing movement onto paper. So uh, he was very young. He lived only for 30 years. He was born in 1866, and he passed away in 1896. But within that time, uh, he had put together a whole system of uh, uh, notation, uh, where, which, which uh, involved the placement of uh, actors and characters and the way they moved. So he was more of a kinetic movement master uh, in terms of not just the body, but also the position of the body at the time in the composition on the stage. So a very unique individual. But he 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 passed away pretty young. And uh, a name that's not on my screen, uh, I'll talk about is, uh, there was another gentleman called, another dancer called Alexander Gorsky, who actually documented this system. And in 1900, after Stepanov had died, uh, these uh, were actually published uh, in terms of uh, actual notations. This is a page from the actual notation of that uh, document. Uh, and this is La Bayadere, uh, which is also a ballet, again, uh, composed by Marius Petipa. So all this had to be uh, written and documented uh, at the Marinsky Theater. But then, of course, we know that after 1900, there was a Russian Revolution, and then the, the thinking and mindset, all that changed. Uh, so there would have, at that time, been a question mark as to what will happen to these works. And at the time, Nicholas Sergeyev, the gentleman on the left, I didn't find a photograph. This is the, the best that I found, uh, was the director of the St. Petersburg Imperial Theatres. And it is to him that the world owes a gratitude because he is the guy, person who brought out this entire collection out of Russia in, uh, you know, after the October Revolution of 17, 1917. Today, the Segev collection is housed at the Harvard Theater Collection at the Houghton Library, where it has been. It's been there since 1969. So anybody who wants to see can go there and see. And the most important sentence is the last one. It was with this choreography that the many of the classical ballets were performed outside of Russia. So again, I go back to the importance of the notation. And this makes the kind of work that Venuji is doing uh, far more important. And hopefully we won't have to wait for a hundred more years to say <laughs> there was somebody who did the notation. So that's the that's the importance of uh, this whole context in terms of background. Then we come to 1912 uh, and uh, Václav Nijinsky and Bronislava Nijinska, brother and sister. That's uh, Nijinsky on the left and uh, Nijinska next to him. Uh, he was uh, an iconic dancer and he was, uh, 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 you know, uh, called to be perhaps the most uh, outstanding dancer, iconic dancer of the 20th century at the time that he was in. He was very um, intense. He was very uh, focused. He was absolutely involved in what we he did. And he was also incredibly gifted with a choreographic ability. 
from the historical works that I have uh, read. Uh, this uh, piece, he did a lot of work with the Ballet Russe uh, uh, at the time, which was a large company that was put together by another iconic figure, Serge Diaghilev. Uh, and he, he has a huge history of uh, 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 organizing a lot of uh, uh, ballets in uh, primarily in Paris, but also took them around uh, Europe and, and uh, South America as well as early as the 19, you know, 15, 10, 20, about, it, to about 1925, because even Diaghilev passed away uh, in, in 1929 uh, then. But Nijinsky was iconic, like I said, and he... Uh, in, uh, first performed this piece called The Afternoon of the Fawn. And this is a photograph of Nijinsky uh, from that uh, particular composition. Uh, he, he, he danced himself. Uh, and another, another uh, point that I want to talk about here is, you see the poster here, that was uh, uh, designed by Leon Brack. Uh, so you you... I mean, you, this is also a kind of uh, point that when ballets were performed then, uh, if there was uh, a lot of clear documentation, that would have helped a lot. But it was a golden age when great artists like uh, Leon Baxter as well uh, designed, got involved in these productions. And it, that's what made it a stellar kind of uh, uh, performance in, in the whole. Nijinsky, uh, this was a very, very popular ballet. It was performed a few times. Uh, and Nijinsky felt that uh, he uh, had to keep hold of, of his own choreography of that piece. And he wrote down that choreography. But he wrote it down in a particular code that only he could understand. And from what I have read, it was only understood and deciphered as late as 1988. There's a reason for this basically because uh, contrary to popular belief, Nijinsky did not have a, a very long career. He danced only for nine years. Only for nine years. So from 1908 to 2000, uh, 1917 was his last performance. He was uh, uh, born in, in uh, Kiev, uh, which is Ukraine today, uh, Russia then, but he was born to Polish parents and in his mind he always felt he was Polish. But the, the unfortunate uh, predicament that uh, Nijinsky was possibly born with is that he had, he developed severe schizophrenia. Uh, so after, two after 1917, he could not dance anymore. And then by about uh, 2020, he had to be institutionalized. Uh, so he, the last uh, uh, 30 years of uh, Nijinsky's, li uh, Nijinsky's life, uh, he was in, a, in an asylum and he passed away in 1950. However, his sister was not uh, affected. And, and uh, she made it her uh, life mission uh, to not just push her own career uh, forward, which she accomplished pretty well. Uh, she, she was a dancer, but she was not a great uh, dancer. She was a, more of a documentation uh, um, enthusiast. And she played a huge part in documenting her brother's work for posterity. Had she not done that, we would not have had so many of the materials that we have from the time. Next one. This is... yeah. okay. Now, we come to 1920. So we've come from 1912 to 1920. And this is a path-breaking year and a moment because of this gentleman. Rudolf Laban and the birth of the modern notation format. 
Uh, he was a master. And if you see the two photographs where he's uh, sitting down, the right one, he's, he's in a dance pose. If you look at him, in both these photographs, there is a kind of object in front of him. It's a kind of cube or square. Or it's not a square, but it's like a, a mix of triangles together. Uh, and this is a device that he kind of uh, developed himself. And uh, I'll explain to you in the next uh, slide in terms of wh what that is. And he uses this uh, 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 this this um, object to explain his thought process and methodology, but he was a phenomenal thinker. And uh, there was nothing like him uh, before that. But where did this, you know, where did Rudolf Laban's think, uh, thinking come from and where imagination come from? This was his background. So this is, these are the people who uh, uh, influenced his thinking and made him think the way he did. Who are these people? Uh, people? Let me talk about them from the left. The man, in, the gentleman in the hat is uh, Paul Cezanne, the great painter Paul Cezanne. Uh, next to him is Gustav Klimt, uh, Austrian. Uh, Cezanne was French. Klimt was Austrian, based in Vienna. Great painter, lady in red. Uh, all that is by Klimt. You can see his uh, a lot of his work in the Belvedere Museum in Vienna, if you get there. Uh, Oscar uh, Kokochka, uh, German, great painter, imaginative painter. Uh, the gentleman in the middle holding a, a pipe or a, or a pointer is uh, Vasily Kandinsky. Again, uh, a hugely imaginative painter. Uh, next to him is Pablo Picasso. Doesn't need any uh, introduction for the world. Next to, on the right of uh, Picasso is Henri Matisse, French, uh, great collaborator uh, with uh, the Ballet Russe in terms of the sets and the backdrops and all that. Uh, and uh, on the, the last photograph is uh, Egon Schiele, again German uh, and completely modern, uh, extraordinary painter. And so looking at the work, that all these people were doing at the time that Rudolf Laban uh, uh, left uh, uh, Germany and came to, to uh, England, he carried all these visions of these people. Now, there were other painters as well. There were Gauguin, there was uh, Surat, there was uh, Van Gogh, uh, Pizarro before them. But these were the painters that Laban himself said that I, I got, I took my inspiration from these uh, uh, people before me. So he saw their work and then he asked himself, this is the birth of his, uh, you know, thinking in his mind. What was the equivalent of the visual arts revolution for the movement arts? So if art, painting, the art of painting was done differently in 1850s, 1880s, uh, by the time the Impressionist movement had started. Uh, but why couldn't he, being a dancer, uh, uh, you know, being, being a, a thought process and a, a you know, developer, why, what kind of revolution can one bring through to the movement of arts? So he, he tried to think about why it was important and uh, his, the driving sense was the last paragraph that I've put here saying his passion was to establish dance as an art of equal standing to its sister arts. Otherwise, art, art was, was something looked upon separately. And uh, he also believed that uh, without literacy, dance could never be taken seriously by the cultural elite. This was his uh, uh, thought process. This was his idea. So this was what uh, kind of pushed him on. So you you saw this the little object that he had uh, earlier with him. So this was the shapes of the symbols indicate nine different directions in space, and the shading symbol of the symbol specifies the level of movement. So it's a very complex thing. I'm not dancer, so 
I can't really get into the nitty gritties of exactly what it would be. But I do know, I have a couple of friends who actually studied and passed out from the Laban uh, school in uh, London. Uh, but but uh, this is the documented, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, it, I, I don't know what to call this. This is the, the object that uh, uh, Rudolf Laban put together. And on the left-hand side, you will see the documentation uh, style of how he would explain uh, what the uh, thought process were. So he used abstract symbols to define. This had not happened before. Before, people had always used uh, symbols that one was familiar with or you know, people were familiar with. But he developed this whole completely new system out of his head, which was what was path-breaking in itself. Direction and level of the movement, part of the body during the, move, during the movement, doing the movement, exactly. duration of the movement, and the dynamic quality of the movement. Combining all this onto paper was something completely miraculous. Now, when we, when he was collaborating, he also needed uh, this. I find this quite, uh, you know, common with people who are inquisitive, who are thinkers, and they they have collaborators. They talk to people. They get ideas from people, and uh, it it kind of strengthens their own work. So these three, they were all German. Mary Wigman, Kurt Jus, and Sigurd Leder. They were all German, but they they worked with uh, Laban in terms of developing his ideas. And then following this in 1924, Schiff dance, which, which uh, translates to uh, written dance, and a similar version in French and English appeared in 1930. So this is the kind of uh, uh, um, heartbreaking work that Rudolf Laban did. After Laban came Rudolf and Joan Benesch. So when I was, I was re researching this, I kept saying, so you've got Rudolf Laban, now you've got Rudolf uh, Benesch, and there was also Rudolf Nureyev as, as a dancer performing on stage. So Rudolf seems to be a bit common. So Rudolf and Joan Benesch, uh, he was actually a mathematician uh, and who was working uh, he had moved from, again, from uh, Hungary, moved into uh, 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 Prague and, and uh, uh, Budapest, then moved into England. And he met uh, Joan Rothwell. She was Joan Rothwell because they, they got married. And like it shows here, uh, she was struggling to write something down in terms of uh, her dance. And uh, he kind of helped her with it. And this interested me because he was sitting in his office and trying to document, uh, you know, how do I write, write down this movement on paper? And he wrote somebody, he devised a dance notation while at work. He wrote some lines to represent a movement of someone at a desk. Somebody was sitting at a desk. And then he asked a third person to look at that drawing and interpret that drawing. This was the beginning of what uh, Rudolf and Joan Benesch started. And uh, they came out with, uh, you know, on the left, in the middle, you see both of them. On the left-hand side is a page from uh, a notation in the Benesch uh, style. On the right is uh, one of their books. And uh, in the Benesch movement documentation style, you see the uh, physical image as well, translated as to what, how it is written in, in the notation. On the, it's, it, this is also Laban's style and Benesh's style have actually come into practice and have been taken up by a, a lot of people. I'll go back into Laban's style when uh, I talk about uh, Sri Venuji's work, because there I will show you the, the kind of combinations that uh, ideas that he got and how he adapted his work original in an original style, but building upon the inspiration that he found by looking at Laban's work. Uh, so he, Rudolf Benesch actually in 55, he, he uh, passed away a little after that, but uh, 
he he called his notation is aesthetic and scientific study of all forms of human movement by movement notation so he was a very academic person uh, obviously being a, a mathematician but their system that they they jointly worked on and published also happens to be uh, carried forward by a lot of people in a lot of places including a lot of tanzas then there's this whole compressed uh, 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 you know slide that i've put together to quickly run through part this is not entirely a, a complete list but in 34 joseph schilling's accurate notation system based on 3d bone rotation and the translation of a moving dancer 1948 this is interesting because uh, hania home was a, a choreographer and then she had her dance scores choreograph uh, copyrighted for her work on the broadway show kiss me kate that's the that's another first uh, 1951 stanley d kan kan notation a dance notation system specific to tap dance then of course the romanian folk dances that were uh, documented by theodor vasilescu 1970s the chamo dance system notation by choreo north korean choreo, uh, choreographer yu chang sop basically pictorial symbol 1971 and hutchinson guest she is also very important reconstructed choreographer arthur saint leon pade d pade c is from 1844 uh, that's a that's a very old ballet but with its original music composers for the joffrey ballet this is what she did and she was also a, a very important historian when it came into the actual notation development and and the kind of writing that she did and interestingly in 1982 the first computerized notation system the dom dance notation system was created by eddie dombrower for the apple to personal computer I don't know what happened to it after that, but it is. This is a, a recorded fact. So, having seen all this, okay, I come to the 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 specific the portion of what I where I talk about Benuji and his work. Arthur Kostler, whose line this is, resonated with me for um, has has been with me for for a long time. creativity is the de defeat of habit by originality so uh, i i chose this picture because it kind kind of represents habit to me because what habit does is close us into a a space you can see outside you can you know what's aware of but you're not allowing yourself to go out basically because of your habit that kind of surrounds you and this is the this is exactly what uh, veno ji walked through and in his life and his uh, view and work this kind of cage like habit does not appear so this is what i talk about and here's where i go into the um, the incredible amount of body of work that he has put together over the years let me start with this uh the uh, i talk about this more uh, i'll talk about it towards the end but uh, in 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 the first ever documented not well it's documented that it was documented how do i explain that we know that from history guido de arezzo in the 11th century was a, an italian monk who is said to have documented um dance Uh, or written about uh, dance but the, nothing of the written uh, document survives except for a mention that he did do some writing on dance so his name and the year survives but there's nothing to show in terms of what was actually written and uh, how it kind of came to be so in uh, 1986 the grolier club in new york Uh, which is again, I'll talk about that in little bit more detail. Very impo important uh, uh, 
organization and it's nothing like the club that we think uh, not most clubs are uh, they they published this uh, uh, paper or this is a, a book called 400 years of dance notation and i put this here because on the right hand side you you see the entire chronology of documented dance notation in the world as as per the research that these people did over 400 years and there'll be many names that I talked about are already on the list. But one name on the list in 1983, on your right-hand side, second last from the bottom, mm -hmm. is Venuji. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to set the stage of how important his work is. Uh, sometimes uh, people don't uh, understand that uh, there's so much of work that goes on behind and because he is a, a person who does not uh, come out in the open and uh, uh, let himself uh, you know shout uh, in a loud voice but quietly does his work that's the amount of importance that he features on this list where did it all begin it began at home and this is venuji's father an iconic figure and uh, a person who in, inculcated that uh, uh, energy within Venuji. He himself was an artist and he was an extraordinary portrait painter. And uh, uh, the last time I uh, had spoken to Venuji, I had also learned uh, the fact that uh, he did believe personally, his personal belief was that uh, uh, um, photographs can carry uh, emotion, but uh, the paintings carry the spirit. Uh, a great portrait carries a spirit within itself when it is uh, when it is a, a very good portrait of of uh, another human being. So that the he was very uh, inspirational, very different kind of thinker, and very much a supporter of arts. Uh, and he. Uh, Himself was a painter, specialized as a portrait painter, but because of his uh, interest in the arts, they also had a culinary school in the in the house itself. Uh, and, and it was not a great massive, uh, uh, you know, villa with a great amount of space and all that. But despite the fact that uh, they had their own challenges, he did try to support uh, uh, you know other other dancers, Kadrili artists also, and that was the uh, the the interest that um, led uh, Venuji to look at dance and art, and that is where the whole journey began in terms of where his uh, outlook to to the classical arts and and then one thing led to the other. So started with the father and the mother. From there on, he went to. Guru Gopinath's uh, uh, academy, and not in any Ketan. Uh, this uh, it, 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 here's where I make a personal connection myself because my father was also a prime disciple of Guru Gopinath, and so they have this uh, commonality of thought because they had the same guru. Uh, and Venuji actually went into uh, his school and was studying under him, but at the same time he used to watch a lot of Kathakali and was fascinated with the mudras. And when he saw the mudras being performed on stage and he, were, he learned, uh, was by then learning some of the mudras, but any time he saw a mudra that he did not understand, he would go and ask uh, in terms of uh, having someone explain to him what that was and, and what that mudra was and why it was like that. And, and then he started kind of uh, writing down mudras in notebooks and then understanding them. And by that time, over a passage of time in his uh, learning and process, uh, learning process and, and spending time at the school, he had completed about 300 uh, drawings of mudras. And at one, you must remember that it was more of a, a, a conservative Kerala then, you know, in terms of sharing information and stuff. But he took the courage to go to Guruji and show him and demonstrated some of them while, uh, you know, uh, 
showing him what to do, uh, what his work was and his uh, uh, drawings of the mudras were. Guruji apparently looked at them and he tried to form those mudras with his own hands and then said to him, go to Guru Changanur Raman Villa, who is Guru Gopinath's elder brother, who was a great Kathakali uh, exponent then, and uh, show it to him and get his views in terms of what it is. So this is a, a trait that uh, 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 I told you about Laban earlier, Rudolf Laban, where he had collaborators and he had inspiration from so many of these painters and uh, uh, creative thoughts in his head started working. It's similar here as well because he, uh, Venuji has also followed somewhat similar uh, process where he has always at every stage tried to validate his work. He did not go on uh, uh, on a track of, uh, you know, a solo track where I develop something and when I, when I try and finish everything, then I will try and see if it is uh, valid. The validity can be entertained. So he went across to uh, see Changanu Ramapilla, sir. Before I move to the next slide, Guru Gopinath also uh, uh, published this book. The book in the middle is something that Guru Gopinath, this is the second edition. This was in 1955, but it only has a small little collection of Kadakali mudras, just, just, the, just the mudras alone. But even that was not uh, uh, available then. Uh, so that's something pioneering that uh, Guru Gopinath also did. This is uh, Guru Changanu Ramapilla, Guru Gopinath's elder brother, whom uh, Venuji showed the work, who looked at everything and all through the work that Venuji was doing, he always encouraged him. And, and this is also something quite miraculous because someone, a doyen of uh, his stature at that time in Kerala could have been very, very difficult uh, to deal with such experimentations. And, and uh, a lot of them would have also thought it unnecessary uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of traditional uh, scenario. So this was in 1965 that he actually put this uh, all together. And this is one page, uh, totally about 1,752 uh, 1, mudras of Kadagali, Mohini Atam, Atam over the years. It, 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 it started building, but this is where uh, the whole concept of not just the mudra in pictorial, but also the drawings of the corresponding notation uh, in terms of uh, ink. Then, of course, you have uh, other people who have influenced him in terms of his uh, uh, own thinking and strengthening his mind uh, in terms of concept development. Ovi Vijivan was also somebody that Venuji was very close to. His way, his mind, he was a great writer, great writer in Malayalam literature uh, and a great thinker, very original mind. So he influenced his mind uh, thinking process as well. And uh, all this is important because uh, it's people like these who injected that inspiration from time to time, different people from time to time, who endorsed the work that Venerji was doing uh, and also injected him with an enthusiasm to keep going. Because as I said, his uh, Venerji's life has not been easy. So it was not the, the kind of uh, take this flight from there and stay at that hotel. It was not like that at all. It was quite of a huge struggle, but it is with people, important people and his own perseverance at every stage that the work kept going on and on. This is an early sketch. I told you about, uh, the. I showed you the Laban style of uh, notating uh, movement. And... Uh, this is a page from Venuji's study based on Laban notation of kinotographic Laban by Dr. Anne Hutchinson Guest, whom we uh, talked about. She's also featuring on that 400-year-old dance notation history, 400-year uh, compilation. So here you look at under, he, he, how Venuji is, this is where you make the connection with the Laban, where he's taken the Laban notation, understood 
what it means. What does this, this is the right arm forward, left leg is low. And taken symbols, understood that and put it in his head in terms of doing his own work. Again, uh, just like uh, other uh, art uh, writers and developers have uh, done before, imaginative thinkers, they always have uh, a sense of uh, getting their work strengthened and validated by other luminaries that they have uh, access to. Uh, and Venuji's was no different. From the left to the right, Kalamandalam Krishnanaya Rashan, great Kadakali icon of the 20th century, uh, M.K. Kenayar, who was actually a, a government uh, a, a officer, but a huge art connoisseur. Actually, in, in terms of uh, history, his own personality after his death uh, is known more as an art connoisseur more than uh, you know a government a government personality. KPS Menon was a huge luminary when it came to uh, uh, the the whole concept of diplomatic relations, and he, his son, and his grandson were all into. Uh, foreign ministers and foreign secretaries and all that, but he was a huge uh, supporter of uh, Venuji's work. And of course, uh, Envy Krishnavarid, who's actually a publisher, writer, linguist, polyglot, 18 languages, imaginative uh, mind. And he supported uh, um, Venuji's work. He, all of these individuals have uh, strengthened his work, gave him the inspiration and pushed him along to do more uh, you know, spectacular work as the world moved around. Okay. Cassius Paniker, another iconic figure from uh, uh, the world of uh, dance, uh, painting. And, and he was, uh, uh, again, a personal connection for me because Cassius Paint, uh, Paniker and my father were very, very close friends. Or uh, till uh, Paniker's passing in 1977. Uh, and they met in the early 40s, my father and him. But here, uh, we talk about Venuji's uh, uh, association with uh, Paniket sir. Uh, Paniket sir was a very established uh, painter, metaphysical abstract painter. Uh, and he was also the principal of the Government College of Arts uh, in Madras. And in 1966, Paniket is the one who formed uh, the college of, you know, formed the Cholamandal Artist Village in Madras, which is still functioning today. And uh, he and his students uh, and fellow artists together. But he's the, the main uh, person who formed that uh, uh, art, art uh, collaborative group, uh, which still persists today. Venuji uh, had heard of him, had met him, but uh, uh, no, had not had not yet met him. He went to Madras to meet him and to show him these uh, mudra work and notation work that he had done. He had never met the man. He waited for him, uh, asked for an appointment, met him, gave it to him. And Paniker looked at it, uh, appreciated it, uh, and pushed him on to say, continue with the work. It is a great work. It is a great piece of uh, effort, and you must keep doing this. That encouragement actually uh, did a lot for Venuji to move uh, forward with his work. Now, again, you go back to the Laban studies. I'm interspersing this with uh, uh, Venuji's uh, work, with the uh, inspiration that came from uh, Rudolf Laban and his work. So. Movement analysis here, this is a page from uh, his one of his notebooks in 1978, as the slide says. Uh, you know, foot placements and angles together. All these kind of, we, we, we didn't have before that. Uh, he's, this is the kind of place that he's developed in. As this is going on, he got this, Venuji got this uh, opportunity to work uh, with the ministry uh, <clears throat> of Madhya Pradesh as a you know as a Kadagali teacher because you he had to have a, a means of uh, living and uh, and being a teacher helped them. 
And while at uh, Bhopal, Ashok Vajpayee, who uh, was with the Ministry of uh, uh, Culture and the Secretary, uh, happened to see uh, Venuji in in Bhopal in the office. He was he was trying to find some some space to work, and was quite as the story goes, he was he was struggling to find some space to even work. So. Uh, that's when he met uh, Vaj, Vajpayee and Vajpayee wanted to know what he was doing and he he took took him through the work that he was doing and Vajpayee immediately created space for him, ordered the officers there to actually create a space for Venuji to work and then told Venuji, don't do anything else, just do this work. That's all you need to do. This is more important than anything else. So that this is a kind of people whom we need to actually run institutions. That's the kind of thinking and foresight one needs. Again, another page from uh, Venuji's book. Uh, this is the book on the right, the language of Kathakali. And here you can see how he his his style of notation has evolved from what I've been showing you. And here you've got the, the posture, the hands, and the movements are also being notated uh, on paper. So this is the kind of uh, fundamental movement that the entire transposition of the notation, a language that he has developed has changed over a period of time. And it is you can visually see that it's strengthening itself. Uh, this is the uh, Kapilaji also does not need uh, an introduction to Indian uh, audiences, especially those who are familiar with the arts and theater and history, of course. Uh, she was an iconic personality in her own right. She just passed away a couple of years ago, uh, but a huge, a huge contributor to the um, whole plethora of Indian uh, culture over the last 40, 50 years, uh, possibly more. Uh, so, in 1985, the Grolier Club of New York was to publish a book on 400 years of dance notation history, which I showed you uh, earlier. The government of India was asked if they could contribute. It was Kapila Vatsayan who put forward the work of Venuji, and that happened to be the single contribution to the book from the whole of Asia. So, she had, uh, uh, Kapilaji had seen uh, Venuji's work before because Venuji had been to, uh, to Delhi and showed it to her. She remembered this. Venuji was not around when, when this inquiry came from the Grolier Club, but she remembered his work and she put it across to uh, New York. And uh, that is how it find, found its way uh, into the 400-year documentation book. Uh, <clears throat> this is a guru, a great doyen of uh, uh, Kudyatam, whom uh, Venuji considers to be his his complete, uh, you know, a light and flame in his in, in his mind, and, and so does uh, Kapila as well because of the kind of art that they've got from him. Uh, guru Amanur Madhav Chakya was. Uh, Great guru, and and uh, the, the 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 fact that he was an outstanding craftsman and performer is one thing, but the other great thing about uh, uh, Guru Amanur is the fact that uh, he he had the courage, he had the conviction, and the ability to take Kudiyattam out of the sanctuaries, the temple sanctuaries, which was where it was confined to. Uh, for a number of years and making them uh, accessible for uh, the public all of, all over the world. So he were, he I mean his loss is just a, a it's irre irreplaceable like many great artists losses are. Uh, so he's somebody who played a huge huge role in the life of uh, Sri Venuji and he's always been. Uh, the sounding board for the kind of work that uh, 
uh, when she did on the notation and developed it till right till the time of uh, Guruji's passing in 2008. Of course, when you don't have uh, the right hand should work as well as the left hand. And when you have both at home, there's no other uh, you know, better solution. And, and here, uh, Nimla, Nimla Chaiji, whom I, I re refer to her as Nimla Chaiji's work is also very, very important. She also is an established, very respected performer, writer, uh, choreographer. And uh, she's also got so many publications in her own right. So she's also played uh, a role, a huge role in Venuji's life in terms of being a constant support, encouragement. And then, of course, you have, uh, you know, together, uh, you know, produced an artist in the capacity of uh, Kapila. So this is the, uh, this is a duo and... Uh, the mudra work, uh, notation work has uh, also got a, a lot of input from uh, Nirmala ji as, as the years went on. Uh, Venu ji uh, travelled a lot uh, and uh, he's done so much of work so, so in so many places around the world. Uh, but the great thing that he's always done is he's taken his thought process on the notation and his work uh, with uh, the Abhinaya, uh, uh, Abhinaya style of uh, uh, teaching that he's uh, he's been embarking on in so many different on so many different platforms, so many different institutions around the world. And this is this photograph is just a, uh, an example of you know the, the the kind of width that he has seen and. Each time he comes into contact with uh, artists like these performers, like uh, uh, you know, so many of the performers that he's met over the years, he's always talked about the work that he does with his uh, notation. And uh, it, it's something that, uh, it, 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 it's not something that a lot of people can achieve. So I, I promised to talk about the Grolier Club in New York. So it's nothing like the club that we, we know about. It's named after Jean Grolier, 1490 to 1565, which means we are talking about the Renaissance period. He was, what was he known for? He was, he was known for sharing his library with his friends. It was just that was his, uh, the, the, that was his whole idea, saying if I have a collection, I have a collection of books, it must be shared. People have to see it. You know, at least people who know me are willing to, are uh, free to come and, and do what they want with the, uh, with the study and uh, information that they want to gather. So the club was uh, uh, put together in 1884. It's not a small club, more than 100 years old now. Uh, and it's, the club's objective is to promote the study, collecting and appreciation of books and works on paper. So the mission of the club in its last line, in, the, in my last line, is that through its library, its public exhibitions and lectures, and its long and distinguished series of publications, it actually historically documents everything and stores. This is the actual photographs of the interior of the uh, Grolier Club. This is where Venuji's uh, uh, work went into. That book, that particular book on documenting, 400 years of dance notation. So again, we come back to the same stage on the right, uh, same uh, slide. On the right, you see the chronology, 1983, Venuji is right at the bottom. And here, they have taken all the institutions that have actually contributed to the book. So on the left-hand side, under the title, Lenders. And there, just after Stravinsky and the Diaghilev Foundation, you have Venuji's name. So, so it's a it's a long, long, long journey that uh, uh, still continues today. As far as uh, Venuji is concerned, the book uh, Kapila talked about it in her introduction. It is his magnum opus, uh, and that is why it is important that it it receives the amount of publicity 
And when I talk about publicity, the kind of work that Venuji has, uh, has done, achieved through his life, to in my own words, uh, desires a lot more recognition and uh, uh, respect than it, anywhere near what it has got. Uh, this amount of work uh, uh, through a lifetime and this amount of dedication and output uh, is quite phenomenal. Uh, it indeed it is, and I I, I hope that uh, when the book comes out uh, and it it finds uh, visibility among the art world, both in India and abroad, it will it will be a, a, a very notable publication, and of that I am sure. Um, and you know, look at this plethora. I'm not even listing the rest of the books that he's written. Uh, this is books on these are books on only mudras. Uh, I, it's just outstanding work uh, for persistent work, very regular work, and it takes a lot of uh, autobiography. Uh, he finished it last year. It is in Malayalam, and I hope that there will be a, a complete English version as well, because a lot of people would want to. Uh, you know, watch an English, uh, read an English version in time to come. I I'd like to end my thought with these words. Uh, strongest people are not those who show their strength before us. They are the people who win battles that we don't know anything about. So, I think uh, I'm I'm quite honored. Uh, for having been asked uh, uh, to to uh, speak today, and uh, I thank you all for listening. And I hope uh, uh, it has been. I don't consider myself a scholar or anything of that sort at all. I, I'm I'm just interested in in research. I'm interested in art, uh, and I'm interested in history, literature. That's it. Uh, I, there's no, I have no intent. Uh, I just have to, I enjoy the process and uh, I appreciate uh, um, the output in terms of what it does for me and every way that I can support an artist, uh, I try and do. That's uh, that's all it is. Venuji, uh, Nirmala ji and uh, uh, Kapila are very important uh, for me. So, uh, may that continue and I think uh, uh, dance notation is something that uh, India also needs to take uh, uh, a wake-up call and uh, see you know, that work like this cannot go unnoticed. It has to. Uh, that's what my feeling is. Thank you all for listening to me and uh, Namaskar. Thank you so much, Vinodeta. Um, um, I think now um, Vinuji will, will, would like to say something. Screen sharing. So, the host will give us screen sharing. Today is my 77th birth. Throughout my life, I work in the field of performing arts. I never come across such serious study on my work, based on my work. Thank you so much, Vino. It is a great, great endeavor, especially for artists like me. It was something extraordinary. So I have no words to thank you. So it was great, great. And you did so very nice presentation. I met thank you for the first time several decades back when he was very young and he came for an international seminar on Guru Gopinath. 
So that time itself, I discovered that this man is something who really is serious. Mm -hmm. Now, about myself, I just, because I, as Kapila has already informed, the book is in the press and it takes a lot of time because, you know, such kind of notation, drawings and diacritics and so many things. It is fast printing is not possible. <clears throat> so until the book is released, we thought that we will make several series of lectures, especially on the aspects of mudra, which I have been notating. So this is the first, and we know its introduction is wonderful, great. Today, what I want to say is that very few things because we have already heard a lot from the know. But I want to say that I am an artist, just an innocent boy coming into Kadhavali. I was brought up in a very remote village that is Murugamnar. It is considered to be uh, not having an artistic uh, background or anything like that. One day I happened to see a Kadagali performance in a temple when I was 11 years old. That was the first portion. I was so fascinated. I was so fascinated that from the next day onwards I started making something to as dress and start dancing. My brother, early brother was used to do some sort of a drumming and we used to do theater. So my father happened to see this and he immediately understood my interest in it because I was very, very poor student in school, normal school. I was, my brother was very brilliant and I was always getting very low marks and it was a big problem for him. So this, when he saw, he understood that this boy had to go to somewhere else. So immediately he started searching for a Kadagali master. Luckily he found one great master. Those days in the, in 1956, very uh, economically, very bad situation. Everybody is, all artists are uh, starving time and that no performance, nothing because I immediately after the war and so many problems. So one great artist, the son of great Kirikat Vajivari Pleasure, only his son who is highly trained, he was uh, in our village but not as an early artist, he was working in the field as a laborer. My father came to know, immediately he was called. And he was given all encouragement to start a Kadagali school. <clears throat> we are staying in a rented house. Even then my father took this initiative and he rented another house for the Kadagali training. And he took three or four uh, other boys also to train with me because I, I you know, the such art forms cannot be trained alone. And uh, not only that, during rainy season, he, my Ashan, the teacher was very good in uh, massage and everything. He was an encyclopedia himself, everything. So he used to make the best, my father told, make the best oil, all ingredients. We don't mind spending any sort of this thing. <clears throat> financial, he never said that any financial. Uh, uh, restrictions. So it was lavish. Throughout my life, I I had been to many, many this thing, but I never had that kind of wonderful kind of massage and all. 
it is very important for uh, uh, classical training in classical arts very lavishly three months during the rainy season you should have the massage and all sort of training when i think of massage these days i used to visit many national international institutions who have introduced some sort of uh, classical elements in their training and most of the uh, children the, the students they have the physical problems back pain leg pain and all sort of things so i used to the uh, tell the authorities to provide them the this is our responsibility when we are training them in such kind of art forms we have to provide them or we have to see that they are fit physically the massage is a must but nobody is uh, bothering about that this is none of the indian institutions have massage therefore they, you know this so many problems with the uh, even the i don't want to say the names of the institutions here because none of the institutions where i got that i advise them they didn't follow this there i have great regard my father <clears throat> he was earning money only by painting and photography and other in his studio very little money and he spent half of the half of the income for the maintenance of the temple school so that was the kind of encouragement i received after three years my father became utterly poor and he couldn't run the institution so uh, the next option was to go to guru govinds uh, school of vishwakala uh, kendra in trivandrum he just established the institution i i joined as the first student guru govinds had as a great kathakali master then he uh became a creative dancer <clears throat> those days he was one of the pioneers of indian dance with udeshanga ram gopal guru gopinath <clears throat> they were the pioneers to introduce take indian dance to even to make perform in in india <clears throat> because dance was not at all considered to be as a uh, performing art those days when he established his school in trivandrum no girls were uh, that those days no family girls allowed to dance because of his dignity and his uh, approach to the art so many young talents came from very respected families that is a revolution in the history of dance and some of them become very prominent like patni become she is uh, also dancing in films but wonderful performance. one of the greatest performers in india i have ever seen he also trained uh, uh, eminent dancers like guru gopal krishnan and sri thangappan and so many disciples and uh, so that was guru gopal that is a fascinating period for my life because he was highly creative he somehow understood that this boy needs some special training so he fixed a special class only for me every day from 10 to 12 he come and teach that was the time he has uh, introduced in, in the training that several different possibilities of the hand gestures and interpretation of the text in uh, explaining the mudras bikram i i was so fascinated with the mudra so then i am thinking how to do it how to make this uh document because i am quite aware by the time i i was there i was all, almost uh, 18 19 year, year, year old i was very contemporary and i was quite aware of the film possibilities of filming and all but i i i, I those days i thought that it, film is not the right 
media to document the dance technique. Even those days, I used to see regular films because Chitralaga Film Society was just established in Trondurum and during weekends they used to have marathon film shows from all over the world. So I used to witness all these things, I was a member of that. But I never uh, looked for film documentation. I thought that it is okay, it is, you can document an artist if, if, when he is in the right mood and the right condition. That is to a certain extent, but that is not the documentation actually. So what is the documentation? <laughs> a technique is beyond the artist. A mudra have many, many, many possibilities. Even in their uh, eye expression, and the facial expression, and posture, and everything. <coughs> it should not be limited to any individual artist. Even the greatest artist performance, I feel it, that is not a complete justification for the technique. So, what is to be done? This was, I was a very average student in every aspect, very bad in school studies and uh, <clears throat> not at all intelligent in any other thing. So very, uh, my thinking of this, I want to document. And so many possibilities I thought and thought and thought and thought, one day, 1965, I exactly remember, rainy season. I was sitting in my father's studio, it was uh, second floor, and uh, our house is uh, about three kilometers away from the studio. So at midnight, I cannot go home. I was sitting, sitting, and uh, thinking of uh, something, how can I? document with the mudra. <clears throat> Some time in the midnight I got the idea of this 24 basic mudras in our remote show. So I draw one of the gestures and it's so fascinating. And I one by one I completed all the 24 basic mudra graphic symbols. By the time it was already 4 o'clock in the morning, then I slept. Next day morning, when my father saw this, it was in the table. He was a, my father was a great artist. He was not famous. He never uh, <coughs> got an opportunity to get his artistic talent known to other people or anything like that. But he, was, he had great experience in working with the animation film. He worked with the first animation film in South India with the cartoon Mr. Tano and all this. And he was witnessed, he was a witness of great Uday Shankar's Kalpana shooting when he, that time he was also the staff artist of Yavni Studio. He had great admiration for that. So when he saw this graphic symbols of the 24 basic gestures, he was so uh, moved with that. Next day he called me and he said, it is a good work, you continue with that. He never gave any suggestion. So then I started thinking about how to make movement, how to make, depict the mudras. So everything came very naturally, very spontaneously. I never knew that it, is, it can be called a notation. So I started depicting, delineating mudras into the uh, staff. The thing is, you know, those days, you know, there's uh, no money even to buy paper. <laughs> so somehow I managed, I do extra work in the studio and get some money and go to the shop and purchase few sheets of the paper. Like that only we had to, <laughs> father cannot afford after the Kadari uh, training school and everything, and he lost all his savings. So with great difficulty, I somehow managed to continue with the work of notations. 
when you are involved in such kind of work, like notation looks very simple. Okay, this is drawn on the paper, doesn't need much uh, this thing. <coughs> Investment, it's not like that. You are totally engaged because first of all, you learn a mudra or something, then you go on doing it yourself several times, then you analyze the moment. I have already analyzed it and uh, uh, developed symbols. Then you put it in the staff. Exact symbols to be updated. It takes one mudra, takes so many hours. Maximum five drawings can be done in one day. That are also several stages, first in the pencil, then again another neat drawing, like that, like that, like that. Finally you have to copy it in the black ink. So it takes such a lot of time, time consuming and your thought completely blocked and you, you have nothing else coming. You are totally engaged. You are in that world only. You can't do anything else. So I was not doing any activity those days for earning money. Finally, I thought that because it is very difficult to continue because I have to go to the gurus and all. So, no guru charged me so far, but rather they gave hospitality and everything, but still I have to give some dakshana to them. So I started working in a school. They give only monthly 75 rupees a salary. So only then two months salary together, then I go to one, one of the masters, suspending that, that much money. I stay with them and do the work, come back. Like that, it is kind of totally dedicated work. That's why I gave so much importance to my mudra study. Because it is my life, my life I, I gave to this. So whole Kathagali somehow I managed, not completely, because those days, you know, if you ask some funding or anything, nobody gives to a Kathagali student, any, that kind of help. I, I never received a, uh, that kind of help from the government or any academy. I knew everybody there. They say it is great, wonderful, and you know, you continue this, and but never uh, financial support came in the, those days when I needed, when I have enough time to dedicate, and I was dedicating for this work. Somehow I completed about 800 Kadali gestures. Then I was very egoistic. I thought that I will document the entire Indian dance. So I went to North India. I I got a job as a Kathakali dancer in Madhya Pradesh. There I started learning Kathak, Kathak, Manipuri. Then I understood it is not possible unless you know the language. Unless you know Manipuri language, you cannot do anything. Unless you know this Hindi and Urdu, you cannot do anything in Kathak. So I left that idea. But during that time, one of the greatest, I can never forget, help came from us, from Ashok Vajpayee. We know that it's already mentioned about it. Ashok Vajpayee is an young man. He came as a... Uh, he was, of course, later on, he made so much of his contribution you know, in so many things, <laughs> cultural activities in multiple ways. Those days he just joined. And he happened to know about my work. And he said, don't waste your time. From tomorrow onwards, you sit in a spe special room in the, in, in the office of MB Collaboration. And I ordered to give uh, all facilities for you. We can make peace for you or finish your drawings and everything. And about 800 drawings to reproduce. And the entire uh, expenses have been sponsored by his office. That was a great help. I can never forget that those days. 
Then with this manuscript, I went to Delhi. The huge manuscript began to this. So this is the manuscript. So many illustrations those days I draw, sitting in the office of the Madhya Pradesh collaborations. So my Kathakali manuscripts, this is only one volume. When it is completed, it was a great inspiration. When I thought I should go back to Kerala and continue my work. Then I came back to Kerala, but Kerala Sangeetha Academy has agreed to publish a few productions of Madras. Some 350 Madras have been published as Kathakali Ilekai Madras, Malayalam edition. That was another great encouragement. That has got a Sahitya Academy Award. So since then, my main Passion is to notate, but you know, when, when you work as an artist, you got into many, so many different, different things. You cannot just uh, uh, only notate and uh, no income coming from that, one cannot survive. So I went to different, different activities, the atom, uh, this puppetry and many things. But partly I was also notating. So then I met my life partner, Nirmala, who is also highly enthusiastic in uh, uh, working on Mohini Atom. So we together we did the documentation of Mohini Atom. That was the best work we have ever done. Because Mohini Atom was really, even uh, the greatest exponents were not aware of which treaties the Mohini Atom is based for Mudras. Our work, she already trained in, with the Kalyana Kutyama, then for this work she went to Kerala Kalamandam for a special course. It took four years to work on, to complete the notation of Mohini Atom. That is the best work we have ever done. Then came to Puri Atom. <laughs> By the time, the full-time engagement with uh, the notation and mudra is not possible. There is no support coming. So I had to do a lot of things, tour and everything started coming. And so part of the mainly engaged with other activities. Then came into Kodiyatam, but a lot of time is gone for... See, I am not a person just to get my work done and go away. Whenever I enter into an art form, I, I started solving all the problems. I met with the great Guru, Amanur Madhav Chakyar. He was not training anybody. So I started organizing his greatest performer, his performance and his training center. In addition to that, I was also notating. <laughs> that was very great because uh, every day, at 7.30, after his uh, shower and everything, at the pond, taking bath in the pond, he come very fresh. And we used to sit for three hours, so only for mudra study. So I could complete the atom also. So it took almost 55 years of work. So I thought that everything should be published in a single volume. It's very important to see in a single volume. That's what it is going to happen now. If something started, <laughs> I, I hope in a few months it will be ready. But before that, I thought that because now it is only the uh, background of the work is given mentioned, but I am thinking of arranging a series of lectures on the technical aspects of the mudra, 
is very important especially the asrashna devika the basic gestures from where it came and how it is in the in the performing art, arts of kerala and all sort of things what i have observed and i have studied from different different masters i thought that i would give a lecture on that in the coming <coughs> this uh, in a few months there is some six seminars will be organized for this i don't want to say more because time is already <coughs> gone once again i thank the node for the wonderful introduction and i thank ludwig mike nor my friends who came and students also i know so many people came for this spending their time and uh, showing their presence thank you so much